Welcome back, Sethling here. I've got a diamond in my inventory, finally. I've been very strapped for diamonds in my Feed the Beast playthrough, and but I got one, and this is a special diamond because I actually made this one. I didn't mine it, not even my quarry. Uh, I made it, and it's sort of a signal of things to come. I'm going to show you how I went about making it. It uses these machines. Uh, so right here I have a macerator. The macerator is grinding up the coal into coal dust. So if I grab some of that, I can come over here and uh, and craft that into a coal ball. Now, luckily I have tons of flint because of my flintify program on my turtle. So here's a coal ball. I have some other coal balls over here that I've uh, compressed into this compressed coal ball thing. This compressor runs on energy from this battery box. Maybe I should charge that up a bit. I have tons of charcoal now because of uh, all the uh, all the trees I've been cutting down. So I have lots of energy and you can see I have lots of logs in reserve here too. Oh, maybe I should get more of those going while I'm here. Uh, can never have <laughs> can never have enough of these uh, charcoal. Uh, I've turned off this pump here because I don't want the the coal dust to be pumped into the furnace because I don't think it would actually do anything. Okay, so now I've got eight compressed coal balls. Uh, so that took 64 coal coal dust in order to get that. So it's a it's a whole stack of coal that you have to use up and you can't use charcoal. It has to be actual coal. And then I put that around obsidian and I get a coal chunk and I put that back in the compressor and that's how I get my diamonds. So it takes a whole stack, uh, which is a lot, but now that I don't need coal for for my fuel anymore, uh, over here, uh, I can use all my spare coal, and so it's not a big deal. All right, and there's my diamonds. Excellent. So now I have two diamonds, which is perfect because the next thing I want to do is I want to use these diamonds to make a some diamond piping. Now this is kind of expensive, but here we go. Okay, so my I have my diamond transport pipe. Okay, so this quarry over here has been finished up, and uh, so I'm going to move it over. I put down some of these landmarks, and they form a box, and so the landmarks sort of create a bigger area where the quarry is going to be mining. So I think if I just put the quarry, I've never done this before, but I think if I just put the quarry right here, it will... Uh, ooh, maybe not. Hold on, that was the wrong way. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I oh, almost fell off. That would have been disastrous. Maybe, hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I have to do actually to get this uh, this all to line up. Um, I might have to do some research, but I, hmm, because yeah. So basically, the idea is it's a bigger region for the for the quarry to be mining in. Yeah, this one also got knocked down. And I'm not sure why. Maybe I have to put them down first. Why isn't it lining up with this? Oh, they all got they all got knocked off. Huh. And then there should be one up here too. No, it got broken. Maybe we'll make another one. Hmm. I'm not I'm not really sure. Uh this is how you make a landmark. It's very simple. Yeah, it's called a landmark. So I put that there, I right click one. Uh, so this one is in line with that one. When I right click, it should be lining up. Hmm. This is all behaving very strangely. It's not. It's not doing what I thought it would. So I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on here, and then I'll get my quarry going on this larger area. All right. It turns out I was doing it basically right. It's just uh, it was deciding to be mean for whatever reason. Okay. So I'm gonna hook up my quarry and let it start going. Now I wanted to do some interesting stuff with the, here we go, let's see, I just want to make sure it's actually working. Should it have power? Yeah, okay, it's building. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to do some interesting stuff with the diamond uh, piping. And in particular, I want to do some kind of filtering of the blocks that come out of this. So I'm going to have three exits. And uh, so to start with, uh, let's see, never actually used one of these before, so I want to... So if you right-click, you can set filters on what comes 
uh, what goes through the different exits of the pipe. So blue one I'm going to leave alone. Um, I guess black is like a probably the bottom. Blue one I'm going to leave alone because that's where all the items are going to come from. Now I want to have three different uh, three different filters here. And let's see. Uh, so I guess yellow. I'm going to do. Actually, yellow is going to be, be my default. Um, red. I'm going to have be coal because I actually want to filter off coal into a side channel so that oh, I don't have any coal. Shoot. Uh, let me see if the macerator got all of it already. Uh, looks like yeah, probably. Oh, wow. Lucky. Uh, it's such an annoying sound. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have coal come off to one direction. All right, it's already started, so I got to I got to hurry up on this. Uh, coal will be what did I say yellow. Okay, so only coal will go in the yellow direction. Oh, and it doesn't even use up the item, so that's good. And then I'm going to have um, sand. Let's see, what side is this? This is green. So I'm going to have sand go through the green one. And also, uh, do I have any cobblestone yet? I don't. I'll just grab all the stuff. Basically, all the junks that I don't want is what's going to go through the green one. Uh, cobblestone. Yeah, there's dirt too. Good. So dirt will go through here, uh, cobblestone of course, and do you have any gravel? Not yet. Anyway, as it comes through, uh, that'll be that'll be useful. Okay, so then I'm gonna actually make a little hole here, and I'm gonna put some chests down. Actually, let me do it a little bit farther away than this, so that I have extra room to work with. Um, do it over here. Okay. So I'm going to bring the items all the way over here and then they're going to go down to this hole and I'm going to put some chests in here so that uh, so that they'll all get filtered over here. And so I'm going to put three chests. Uh, eventually it'll be full uh, and whatever. I actually could put four I guess but yeah, eventually, eventually they'll all fill up and the extra items will just get dropped into the water. Uh, I might actually end up putting a lava pit there just for those items. Okay, so then this this straight is where all the uh, normal items or things that I want are going to go. So I'm also going to bring these out a little bit. And by the way, the item that I'm using right now to dig is called a it's a drill, a mining drill, and it's basically like it works about like a diamond pick except it needs to be recharged with electricity. So, but it is quite quick, as you saw. Okay, so we're starting to get stuff. Oh, this is clay. I actually don't want the clay. So I'm going to, uh, once this comes through, I'm going to use it for the filter over there. Uh, actually, no, I kind of guess I kind of do want clay. It's rare enough that I don't really have a ton of it. So I'm going to let clay come through. Anyway, and then the coal is going to come off over here. Now, like I said, I want to use the automatic, um, automatic stuff to try and make that into diamond. So I'm going to I'm going to get like a macerator and stuff set up there so that uh, basically I'll just automatically grind up the coal, automatically compress that into whatever it needs to be compressed to and I'll have a pipeline for automatic diamonds. Now the reason this is making a sound over here uh, is I have those hydroelectric generators down there that generate a little bit of energy but not really enough to to get these macerators going so they basically are turning on and off, on and off, on and off it's such an annoying sound. Uh, so I'll just power it and then it won't be a problem anymore. Okay, great. Uh, so let's see, what are some things I, I didn't talk about? Yeah, so this mining drill, I have an electric wrench that is used to basically pick up industrial craft machines. These, th these are things that are rechar recharged in the battery box here. So that one already had full charge. Mining drill uh, just recharges real quick. And then, yeah, I have my jetpack. Oh yeah, I, the longfall boots. These are from the portal mod. And they basically just make you not take any damage when you fall. That's super useful. Uh, because the jetpack makes me go way up in the air. <laughs> so not having to worry about fall damage is great. Especially with all the quarry holes around too. So those are those are really useful. Just charge up my jetpack a little bit though. Because I, I still don't really want to run out. Uh, okay. There we go. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on getting uh, all my automated stuff set up here, but this, this setup right here that I have should be pretty good for getting the items that I want. Now with such a large area here, I am... What the heck? What are... What's the deal with these guys? There's like extra... Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> that seems like a bit of a bug. They're nine blocks wide because that's how wide the the um, the regular quarries are. So I guess there's a little bit of a render bug there with those. But yeah, it is working. And so with, with this large of an area, it's going to take me a long time to get down to the actual diamond, like the diamond ore, which is okay because I'm going to be having the um, all the coal coming through. So not a big deal. And yeah, in the meantime, I should be getting lots of ores and stuff, and I shouldn't have to fiddle with the, the quarry's position every few minutes like I do currently. So this is a really nice setup, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the stuff that I get from it. So far, it's just a bunch of clay. Alright, so here it is. I've done it, I think. Uh, here we have some coal coming up into the machine, and they're going to go into the top of this macerator. It's going to crush them up. And so we'll see all that. Uh, there's basically just a generator here with a bat box powering all this. Actually, power this a little bit more. Okay, so it's says macerating, <laughs> crushing, whatever. Um, and then there's going to be this redstone engine and wooden pipe pumps the items out of the middle box here. And we'll see that in a sec. Yep, okay, so then that pumps it into this pipe which goes in this chest. Now this chest acts as the supply depot for this auto crafting table, which has a recipe in here for the coal ball. And so as soon as this has eight coal dust and a flint, and it has plenty of flint, as soon as it has eight coal dust uh, over here, this redstone engine is going to pump the item out of it. It's going to pump a coal ball out of it. And here it should actually do that right now, because we'll get the eighth one in here. And then, yeah, so it crafts a coal ball, pumps it out of it. That'll go into this compressor. The compressor is going to compress the coal ball. There's going to be another redstone engine here that's going to pump that item out once that's done. And that's going to come up here into this chest. Here's another, basically, it's another chest for this auto crafting table. So we'll see that in a moment um, once this is done compressing. Okay, so this is this pulls it out. The redstone engine pulls it out. Goes into this chest here. Now we'll have eight compressed coal balls and an obsidian, which is what we need for this crafting recipe. And this redstone engine is going to pump the uh, the coal chunk out of here. It goes into the compressor, and that's the final stage. When the compressor compresses this thing, that should be diamond. So, <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's all worked. I'll just have to wait for that to compress. And more coal is going to filter in here and automatically get done and everything. Uh, all I have to do is make sure that I keep the energy stocked on this uh, on this whole thing. Yep, there's my diamond. Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. I love this thing. It looks like a mad scientist machine, doesn't it? But it's small. I'll, I'll be making bigger ones for sure as, as this series goes on. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's just like all these interconnected pipes and wires and... This is great. Okay, so yeah, I just got to make sure that I keep the uh, the energy on here high enough. Uh, that's That should be easy. I have tons of charcoal. And then I also need to make sure that I keep enough flint in here. I need eight flint for every diamond that I want to make, and then I need one obsidian for every diamond I want to make. So that should be fine. Uh, the flint, I have my, uh, my turtle buddy over here. He is running his flintify program just so that I can stock up on, on that flint. The recall, it basically just places the gravel and mines it up again. Ah, uh, I hate that sound. <laughs> hate that sound. <laughs> yeah, so he places it, picks it back up, and uh, and so that produces lots of flints. And so he's just going to keep doing that for a while. I can keep him stocked with gravel, but I should actually have enough flint for quite a while. And yeah, so I just have to... Uh, you know, as I'm doing my normal normal stuff, it's automatically going to make all this. I just got to make sure that I keep the uh, the energy uh, the energy up here. And so I might add another battery box or two just to make sure that um, I have long stores so that I don't accidentally 
let this run out of energy because if it does the macerator here will overflow and then we're going to start dumping coal onto the ground and and losing it so that's not that wouldn't be great but and then i have my chest server here they're starting to fill up with goodies uh, i've already pulled some iron ore out of here to uh to use it iron seems to be the thing that i always need the most of so having lots of iron is good and i'm just going to pull out some more here and run it over to my uh my main uh, industrial craft area. Just pop it in here. And... Yep. Alright, I'm I'm super excited. Oh, and the other thing I did was uh, so this is the this is where all the uh, the stuff goes that I don't want. These chests were filling up really fast and I don't need any of this stuff. <laughs> so I just decided to go ahead and uh, and put a void pipe here. So anything that enters this void pipe is just gonna get destroyed. It's kind of like lava, but with less lag. So that's just going to make things a little bit easier. I don't need any of this stuff. I have chests and chests full of, uh, of cobblestone and dirt and sand throughout my base. Sand is the one thing that I actually do use out of this, but I think I'm basically almost through the sand layer here anyway. And so I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. There are planks in this. There are planks in the pipe. The quarry must have hit a abandoned mine shaft, so we're we're starting to get st stuff from that. Now I kind of wonder what'll happen when the quarry hits any chests that are down there. Will we pick them up? I think so, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, that'll be interesting to see. I'm starting to get some uh, some fence posts and some wood planks. This is interesting. <laughs> um, so I put a wood casing around my uh, my thinger. <laughs> The, the diamond extractor. I think I'm going to go ahead and name it. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it the bling machine because it makes bling. So here we go. Um, actually, I'll put it right here. This is the output. The bling machine. Okay, so this is because this is where the output is basically. Um, this is the battery and it's fully charged. Now I added in a solar panel and so the solar panel actually puts out a very small amount of energy but since this thing isn't actually running unless there's coal in it it's enough to keep it fully charged and whatever so that's good and over here you can monitor the progress by looking in this chest uh, I just got diamond out of it so there isn't anything in there right now and yeah, basically just been like building up supplies. Um, I added another, I have an advanced solar panel here. This actually took a lot of resources to build, but it's quite powerful. This one puts out um, eight units of energy per tick, whereas a normal solar panel does one. But uh, that's actually, I think, almost comparable to, no, a generator puts out more than that, but I'm not sure how much more. Uh, but it's definitely enough that uh, since I'm not using this whole setup all the time with you know my furnaces and macerators and everything, it's it's enough to keep the battery charged in between uses. So I probably won't even have to use the generators here, <laughs> which is kind of too bad because I've spent all this time building up charcoal reserves. Uh, whatever. Uh, I have. Uh, I have gotten three diamonds so far, so that's good. I'm not sure exactly what I want to use them for yet, but I want to use them for something good. And I've started organizing my ores. So I've got tin, um, refined iron, copper, iron, lead, and silver, bronze, refined uranium. I had to use some of this for the advanced solar panel uh, chest with my dusts in them. Anyway. Uh, basically just been kind of organizing, gathering up resources, smelting a lot of my ores, <laughs> kind of going through a lot of these chests to find uh, the, the different ores and stuff in order to, to smelt them. So that's what I've been up to. Alright, to finish off the video, what I want to do is I want to show you a new program that I've written. Um, so the, the problem I'm trying to solve with this program is I want a quick way down to bedrock and I can dig a hole although I'm kind of above water right now on my platform so I, there's gonna be water in the way and if I hit any caves along the way I don't want the shaft that I dig to be exposed 
and I just don't want to do it myself. I want my <laughs> I want my pet turtle to do it. Uh, much easier that way. So uh, I've written a program, and I want to take you through it kind of line by line. And the program's called Shaft. Okay, so I want to go through it, like I said, line by line, and try and explain. Uh, if you don't know how to program, you might not get everything, but I'm going to try and still go through it. And if you do know how to program, this should make sense to you. Okay, so this first function here is called place. Uh, the idea for this function is that it's going to try and pl it's going to place a block. It needs to know what the current slot is that the turtle has selected, and it can update the uh, the selection, the the slot that the turtle has selected. So it's going to return a value for the new selected block in case it does update it. So uh, basically it starts out by checking if the current slot has at least one block. Uh, if it doesn't, basically if there's nothing in the current slot, then it's going to look through all the slots and try and find one that does. So this for loop uh, is basically going to iterate the cur slot variable uh, between its current value and 16. So it's going to it's going to iterate through this loop that many times, and each time the cur slot value will take uh, take on a different value. So if the current slot is, is two right now, and we use up all the items, it'll start out at two, then it'll go up to three, etc. Uh, and each time through the loop, it's going to check the item count of that slot, and if there is at least one item in there then it's going to break from the loop. That's what this break command does. It uh, exits the loop. Uh, otherwise, it'll just keep going on in the loop and checking for each slot if there are items. And then once it gets through that, uh, it's going to try and place a block. So if we do run out of blocks, this will this will place a new one. Um, and then it's also going to, it's going to return the, the, the slot, which could be the same as it was when the function was called, or it could be a different value. The next function is called check fuel. This is a simple one. All it's going to do is, well, it takes the current slot that's selected. Uh, if the turtle has low fuel, if its fuel is less than one, it means it won't be able to move given the current fuel level. So it needs to, the turtle needs to select the first uh, slot and then refuel one item from that slot. That's where the coal is always and then it's going to select the current slot again. And that's why the current slot was passed into this function as an argument. And it doesn't return anything because it doesn't change uh, any variables or anything. Uh, then there's two functions here. There's down and up. Down just checks, fuel, checks the fuel. Uh, and so because that check fuel function needs the current slot, down also takes the current slot as an argument. And uh, then it returns the, well, it, it tries to move the turtle down. Now, if the turtle successfully moves down, then turtle.down will return true. If the turtle doesn't successfully move down, it's going to return false. So this function will return the same value that turtle.down returns. And the up function is the exact same thing, except it goes up. So overall, the function will check if it has enough fuel. If not, It'll refuel, and then it'll try and go down and return the result of that operation. Same for up. Then that's all the functions we need. From there, we record the depth, and uh, it's going to start out at zero. Uh, the, uh, the the current slot should set be set to two, and actually this should be a local variable. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but. I like to keep them local where I can. So then, current slot set to 2. Uh, the turtle selects the second slot. Then it's going to dig down and start a loop. Basically, as long as the turtle uh, goes... So it'll, it'll try and make the turtle go down. If it's able to go down, then it does some stuff in the loop. Uh, if it's not able to go down, it's going to go to the end of the loop. Uh, in that loop... There are a couple things it does. One is that it turns around four times and tries to place a block. That's what this loop is for, and I'll go, go through that. And then it digs down and increments the depth variable. Okay, so this for loop with 
4 turn equals 1 comma 4. This is going to go through the loop four times. Each time turn is going to take on the value of 1, 2, 3, or 4. Uh, but we don't actually use that variable, the turn variable here. It's just to keep track of our loop number. Uh, each time through the loop, it's going to try and place a block. Now remember that the place function could update the slot. So it takes the slot as its argument and it returns the new slot as its return value. So that's what that's all about. Then it's going to turn right. So four times it's going to place a block and turn right. And that'll create a little tunnel uh, anywhere that there aren't blocks, like in the water or in a cave. It's going to try and dig down and increment the depth variable. So when it gets to the bedrock, it's not going to be able to go down anymore, and the depth variable will be equal to the number of blocks that travel downward. So basically, we're going to go through a loop that many times and have the turtle go up. So that's that's all there is to it. I haven't actually run it, uh, so hopefully, hopefully it'll work. It's called shaft, and we can see it looks like it's doing something. Yep, and it's placing blocks. Uh, I'm, I can actually <laughs> hop onto it if I want. Uh, once it gets through all the water, it won't have to do any more block placing for a while, probably. And so it should go a little bit quicker. Oh, it's got more water down there. Yeah, so... Alright. Uh, well, I'll probably speed this up to the end and show you the result. All right, uh, looks like it's maybe done, although it looks like it may not have taken as long as I would have expected it to. So, oops, let me get out of its way. So let's take a look at the shaft. Okay, yeah, no, it got all the way down to bedrock. Looks like it didn't actually have to place any of that cobblestone. <laughs> so I spent a t bunch of time writing that code for uh, not, no good reason, but I mean it's it's reasonable code, so I can. Uh, I can I can reuse all that. I'm just going to put a uh, trapdoor on top of that because I don't want to constantly be falling in. But otherwise, it's a nice shaft, and I can use that to get down to bedrock level. That'll be really useful. All right, so hopefully, hopefully those of you who uh, don't know how to program maybe learn something. Sorry, I went into <laughs> such painful detail for those those of you who do already know how to program. Uh, it's you know it can be hard to find a good middle ground uh, when I'm trying to teach different concepts to people because there's a wide variety of people who watch my videos and I don't can't assume that everyone knows everything but I also don't want to assume people don't know anything so but uh, but hopefully you learn something and I will have the source code for that shaft program in the video description and thanks for watching.